that scan imaging is a way of looking at the nigrostriatal dopamine pathways and seeing if there's degeneration or not. It's really a test that can help us determine in patients who have Parkinsonian symptoms whether it's due to degeneration in the nigrostriatal system or not. And this can help us make clear diagnoses perhaps and choose our therapies with more clarity and probably avoid using medications in patients where they're unnecessary. Right now, we don't have imaging techniques that help us determine whether there's degeneration in the dopaminergic system in Parkinson's disease that are commercially available. There's some research programs going on, but spec scanning with ioflupane, DATSCAN, is the only commercially available imaging modality that allows us to know if there's degeneration in nigrostriatal dopamine pathways. One of the things that we've been looking at is which patients might benefit from having a DAT scan? Which clinical scenarios could we begin to think where DAT scan could be more useful than others? And we've thought about things like psychogenic Parkinsonism, drug-induced Parkinsonism, vascular Parkinsonism, where we're not quite sure based on the symptoms whether there's an underlying degeneration that's being brought out by, say, a neuroleptic drug or whether it's just only due to a neuroleptic drug. Some other situations are interesting as well. Some patients have severe essential tremor and the severe tremor in their hands prevents us from really evaluating well rigidity and bradykinesia. There are some patients who three or five years after being diagnosed with Parkinson's disease are still taking the same dose of levodopa and have the same amount of clinical symptoms. And we wonder, is this a slow form of Parkinson's disease? Or maybe they were misdiagnosed, especially if they don't have motor fluctuations by five or six years. And this group of patients we have looked at that scan and found about half of them don't have degeneration. They were misdiagnosed, they were taking this medicine for unnecessarily. Another place is early on. We're doing a lot of work looking for biomarkers, trying to find patients with very, very early disease that we might be able to give neuroprotective therapies to as they're becoming developed. People have genetic markers, for instance, as well. And in these patients, what we're able to do is do a DAT scan when the symptoms are so subtle we can't make a clear diagnosis. They almost meet the criteria, but not fully. And combining an imaging modality like DAT scan, uh, we're able to know this degeneration of the dopamine system and that these subtle symptoms are due to early uh, Parkinson's disease or one of the related Parkinsonian syndromes. And indeed, PESCAN has now made it into consensus criteria uh, to consider making a diagnosis of Parkinson's disease. One of the debates that we're thinking about with DATSCAN is whether every patient needs to have one. We know that they don't. Not every patient needs a DAT scan. When you can make the diagnosis securely from clinical symptoms, there's an improvement with levodopa, and they have a typical progression over time, a DAT scan is not, not really useful at all. But if we're trying to measure progression by quantifying it in research programs, we're trying to identify whether mild symptoms or in some of these clinical scenarios, patients have degeneration in the nigrostriatal system, DAT scan can be very useful. So it's part of the decision making process that we now have a new diagnostic test that can help us clarify whether or not a patient truly has degeneration or not and whether they would benefit from replenishing dopamine for the variety of new medicines that we have available. Recently we've been able to look at some of the scenarios where DAT scan imaging may be clinically useful in helping us to change or, or confirm a diagnosis or stop or change or continue or add therapies to our patients. And there have been several recent publications from groups around uh, the U.S. looking at some of these patients and our uh, research as well has demonstrated these clinical scenarios are places to really begin to think about if that scan can be useful for that individual patient.